Oppenheimer is a conflicted physicist who developed America's first nuclear weapon, a bomb that could win World War II or wipe out humanity. The real-life drama behind the scenes was just as intense, leading to questions about whether J. Robert Oppenheimer was also a Soviet spy. At the height of the Red Scare in 1953, Julius Robert Oppenheimer, known as the father of the atomic bomb, was accused of having communist sympathies and hauled before a tribunal. Senator Joseph McCarthy helped stoke the mass paranoia that communists were infiltrating the US and Oppenheimer was in the crosshairs of the House Un-American Activities Committee. The Atomic Energy Commission also accused the scientist of having communist sympathies and declared him a security risk. I can't believe what is happening to me, Oppenheimer said four days before Christmas in 1953. He'd received a letter outlining the AEC charges against him that afternoon. Should he resign from the commission or fight? Oppenheimer often felt something ominous awaited him after the US bombed Hiroshima and Nagasaki in 1945. Now the FBI was tapping his phone. Communist hunting congressmen were demanding his scalp. Oppenheimer's left-wing activities at Berkeley in the 30s were being dredged up along with his resistance to the Air Force's plan for massive strategic bombing with nuclear weapons. He was on the wrong side of AEC Chairman Louis Strauss and the scientist's career and reputation hung in the balance. That evening, Oppenheimer collapsed. It had all started so promisingly. Oppenheimer was born into a wealthy Jewish family in New York City in 1904. His father was a successful textile importer, his mother a painter. After Harvard, Oppenheimer studied physics at the University of Cambridge, then the University of Göttingen, where he earned a PhD he taught at University of California, Berkeley, in the 1930s, where he met one of the graduate students, Jean Tatlock a sporadic member of the American Communist Party and Oppenheimer's lover. His associates fell into two camps. One saw him as an aloof and impressive genius and asthete, the other as a pretentious and insecure poseur, historian Greg Herkin wrote in Brotherhood of the Bomb. Some students worshipped him, even adopting Oppenheimer's walk, speech, mannerisms and habit of reading entire texts in their original languages. In 1940, Oppenheimer married a German botanist, Catherine Kitty Puenning, another communist who'd moved to California and fell under his spell. Kitty was already married, so a quick divorce in Las Vegas ensued. By the time she and Oppenheimer tied the knot, Kitty was pregnant. Around the same time, Oppenheimer was recruited to work on the Manhattan Project and, in 1943, appointed director in charge of developing weapons at New Mexico's Los Alamos Laboratory. He was among those who observed the so-called Trinity Test on July 16, 1945, when the first atomic bomb was detonated. A month later, the US dropped two more on Japan. Oppenheimer was conflicted about his involvement in developing the deadly weapons, recalling that the Trinity Test brought to mind words from the Hindu scripture Bhagavad Gita, Now I am become death, the destroyer of worlds. Now I am become death. The destroyer of worlds. After the war, Oppenheimer advised the Atomic Energy Committee and lobbied for arms control to avert a nuclear race with Moscow. He also opposed the development of the hydrogen bomb and took stances on defense-related issues which began to irk U.S. government hawks and defense industry officials. Questions were raised about Oppenheimer's top-secret security clearance, communist ties, and whether he was a Soviet spy. On his Manhattan Project security questionnaire, Robert had written that while he had never been a communist, he'd probably belonged to every communist front organization on the West Coast. There was a lot of explaining to do. In early 1943, after he had been named Manhattan Project Director, Berkeley professor Harkon Chevalier told Oppenheimer that he knew of a way to pass intelligence to the Soviets. Oppenheimer rejected Chevalier's offer, but also did not report it for another eight months, according to the Atomic Heritage Foundation. On December 21, 1953, AEC Supremo Louis Strauss informed Oppenheimer that his security clearance was suspended and suggested he resign. 
Oppenheimer consulted his lawyer and demanded a hearing. Unfortunately for the physicist, Strauss was the chief appellate judge. Most of the two dozen allegations Oppenheimer faced involved his communist ties. The last charge alleged misconduct over the hydrogen bomb, Oppenheimer's opposition to its development, altering estimates of the bomb's feasibility, and refusing to cooperate after President Harry S. Truman greenlit the H-bomb project. In a two-to-one vote, the panel decided that while Oppenheimer was a loyal U.S. citizen, they objected strongly to the Chevalier incident and his eight-month delay in reporting it. In a move seen by some as grandstanding, Strauss's panel revoked Oppenheimer's security clearance less than 24 hours before his contract was due to expire and his clearance would lapse in any event. Many in the scientific community were aghast. Albert Einstein suggested AEC should stand for Atomic Extermination Conspiracy, while Werner von Braun, known as the father of rocket science, told a congressional hearing that, in England, Oppenheimer would have been knighted. Semi-retired now, J. Robert Oppenheimer continued to lecture and in 1960 helped found the World Academy of Arts and Sciences. He died of cancer at the age of 62. Almost 70 years after the AEC panel ruled against Oppenheimer and revoked his security clearance, the U.S. Department of Energy reversed the decision. In December 2022, they called the trial a flawed process that violated the Commission's own regulations. Let's dive a little deeper in the The Manhattan Project. It was a top-secret World War II research and development program that led to the creation of the first atomic bombs. It was named after its principal location in Manhattan, New York, where scientists, engineers and other experts worked together to harness the power of nuclear fission. The wartime laboratory occupied buildings that had once been part of the Los Alamos Ranch School in New Mexico. More than 600,000 men and women worked on the Manhattan Project, initiated by the US government. The Manhattan Project brought together many of the world's leading scientists, including Robert J. Oppenheimer, Enrico Fermi, Richard Tolman, Arthur Compton and Niels Bohr, to work on the development of atomic bombs. The Manhattan Project paved the way for the development of nuclear energy and the peaceful use of nuclear technology in medicine and industry. However, it also raised ethical and moral questions about the use of nuclear weapons. One of the main concerns was the human toll of atomic warfare. The bombings of Hiroshima and Nagasaki killed between 129,000 and 226,000 people, mostly civilians. The use of atomic bombs was seen by some as a violation of the principles of just war and the laws of humanity. The possibility of nuclear accidents, environmental contamination and radiation exposure also raised significant ethical and moral questions. British-German physicist Klaus Fuchs was at the heart of the American and British nuclear programs during World War II, working in the UK, New York and at Los Alamos, where he helped build the atomic bomb. He leaked every secret he knew to the KGB and may well have remained under the radar if the Allies hadn't broken the Soviet codes. Theodore Ted Hall was the youngest scientist to be recruited to work on the Manhattan Project at Los Alamos, New Mexico. He was also an atomic spy who passed detailed information to the Soviet Union about the implosion-type Fat Man bomb and processes for purifying plutonium. Cambridge Five spy Donald McLean also leaked top-level atomic intelligence from London and Washington, D.C. while working as a top-level diplomat. The most famous atomic spies, Julius and Ethel Rosenberg, didn't work for the Manhattan Project, although Ethel's brother, David Greenglass, was a machinist at Los Alamos National Lab.